dead man's curve. Talking about a dead man, let's talk about the Broncos. Sean Payton or Russell Wilson? <laughs> the whole team. All of them dead. There was Jerry rumors. Judy. I was just about to go there. There are rumors. Uh, obviously, the, the Broncos are looking to move off of some pieces. They already cut uh, Frank Clark and and um, seems like there's a fire sale going on in Denver. Uh, Jerry Judy has been uh, the rumors to some trades, uh, and it has been stated that the Broncos are looking for a second round pick in return for Jerry Judy. It appears that all the other 31 teams have rejected the Broncos and their request for a second round pick. Uh, it's looking more like Jerry Judy, if moved on from by the Broncos, will be going for no more than a fifth round. Love fifth. to see that. Former first round draft pick. Former first round draft pick. Tanked so badly by this. Word. I, like, I still think Jerry Judy has a lot in him. If there's a coaching staff that can take him on. That's not like inept. I or think he still a has semi-competent a semi-competent quarterback. Semi-competent. Like, I think he has a lot left and he could end up being a good to great receiver, not all time, anything like that, but a good to great, probably a wide receiver. Number one on a lot of teams. But for a fifth round, I Broncos are Broncos are bad. These guys are bad. It's been, Eight years. We're about to keep the streak going with uh is it game is is it 17, 16 in a row? It's been 17, eight years. 17. The last time they beat us, I know we've talked about this, everybody else is talking about the last time the Chiefs beat us. I thought the, I heard the, 17 already. It should be 18. Um the number one song on the charts the last time the Broncos beat us eight years ago. Watch me whip. Really? That long ago? That long ago. Can I, I see was that in dance college. Again? <laughs> I'm just I'm just waving He's my just hand. waving. No dancing. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I mean, not only is the song bad, but that was a long time ago. That feels like a lifetime ago. Is that gonna be on your top five dance moves? When are we getting to top five dance moves? <laughs> oh, maybe. <It's>, I mean <laughs> you never know. When's it coming out? That's pretty. The name name was pretty iconic. Well, we need we need what six six more subscribers on the YouTube get to fifty and you and you're dropping it. I get if that's what if that's the milestone you set. I'm asking you. Why are you asking me? Is it your dance moves? Is it? I was top five. (laughs) He apparently is not wanting to do that anymore. Is it my dance moves? Don't no, don't tell don't, me. Don't tell me what I am and I'm not. It's a whole big production, man. It's taken Yeah, dude. And, and then you <laughs> then you said then you said you wanted it in different outfits now. Like I was literally just gonna do the same outfit. And now I, I have to do it in, now I have to do it in different outfits. So it's like that puts yet? me back. It sets me back. It's dude. we're we're tweaking it. We're tweaking. He's got so many dance moves, he can't pick five. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Hopefully we have that out soon. I don't know when it's coming. Fifty subscribers. Six six more on the YouTube. Go and subscribe. Six, six more. Why just YouTube? With what? I don't know. <laughs> there are what? a few injuries that we need to talk about for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh obviously big name here. Ah. <laughs> With, <laughs> will be going <laughs> on the IR very soon. Uh, just had surgery on the dislocated wrist, uh, so expect to have him out for a while. A couple other non-participants in practice this week. Jarek McKinnon is uh, a full participant on Wednesday and then non-participant on Thursday due to a groin and then due to illness. Harry Butts, buttkicker.com, Harrison Bucker, did not practice on Thursday. So in practice, I don't know if you guys saw it or if anybody listening saw it. There was some video that came out. Uh, Justin Reed is our emergency backup kicker for Sunday, should Harry Butts not be playing as well. Patrick Mahomes was seen taking some punts 
uh, to be our backup punter you mean, should anything ever happen to Tommy Towns. We're not elevating anybody from the practice squad or whatever. No. Like, we're just going with Justin Reed as a kicker if Harrison cannot go. Yep. He'll be fine by Sunday. Are we sure? Do we, do we know? Are we sure? It's just an illness. Are we sure? Oh, yeah, you said illness. Call. Illness. Oh, okay. Illness. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, he'll be fine. Unless he's got happen, fucking like... COVID, Sean. Hey. Hey, what? Put some Vicks on your feet. You'll be fine. Yeah, that's how it works. Go, please, go on. (laughs) Uh, Other than that, uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs, we look to be all healthy. For the Denver Broncos, everybody practiced on Thursday, uh, so no looming issues for that dumpster fire that people call a team. What are some things that we should be looking forward to this weekend on Sunday in the three o'clock hour for the Kansas city chiefs. Uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, has more 400 yard passing games than any other player since starting in 2013. Uh, He's got 10 400 yard passing games. Rasheed Rice is looking solid. What what should we be looking forward to in this game? Should it's the second time we're playing the Broncos in three weeks? We now do not. Neither team has a short week to play on. We're we're at full capacity here. What are we expecting to see? I think it's honestly just going to be a continuation of the last game two weeks ago. Just more ass kicking, more ass kicking, more ass kicking. <laughs> Uh, if you recall, against the Chargers, Isaiah Pacheco did not have a great game. Uh, average per carry wasn't very good, 2.3. and that's going to change this week. He's going to get around the same amount of touches, uh, but the uh, yards per carry on the ground is going to be around four or five, like it should be, because the Broncos are bad against the we saw in practice this week that Justin Watson has returned and has been a full participant in practice. McCole Hardman has now That's had just jolly <laughs> two full weeks of practice going into this game with the Kansas City Chiefs. A guy that had question marks all around him, Justin Ross, um, does not have court now until the end of the season, uh, in in into twenty twenty four. So. He has not been cut and will not be cut until court has deemed whatever is whatever is whatever. So he has been a full participant in practice all this week after Tuesday as well. Could we be expecting to see Justin Ross out on the field? He got 17 snaps last week. Should we continue to see that trend or should we see him kind of return back to his normal six snaps per week? I think it'll be down closer to like three snaps this week. Don't think he gets a lot of love there. I think Miko is going to get a lot of his reps in there, honestly. And Justin Ross is going to be in the doghouse for a week or two. I honestly think McColl is going to take a lot of reps just from everybody. Uh, if anybody's hurt, I think Andy Reid and the coaching staff have done a good job of managing injury and not like overloading them. So like, don't expect a whole lot out of Justin Watson. Uh, McColl Hardman is is going to eat up is going to eat up everybody's timeshare on the field, snaps, targets. Like I I think Pat is happy to have him back. Um, He's just another speed option and Pat loves speed. Like we know how to scheme speed open. So. Yeah. But Cole coming back is a, trying to think of a way to phrase this best but i I think it's a like a hot commodity for this team right because now we've got an additional receiver that's gonna who who has already been integrated into the team already knows that we don't have to wait on him he can come in and play right away we saw that last week i think he's going to cut into like you said a lot of snaps and i think that will hurt sky more the most at least in how often he's out on the field uh, he does. He is uh, second in most offensive snaps taken by our wide receivers. 
even though we'll probably see his snaps go down, do you guys expect to see Sky Moore get more volume now that we actually have an, another receiver in there who knows Pat and run routes well and kind of take over that coverage? That's, That's such a long question. I couldn't follow it. I Go ahead, think Sean. Sky's going to get open a lot more now. He's going to get a lot more looks his way. Uh, there's the defense has so much more to focus on now with another guy that knows what's going on. And you had so Rashid Rice playing well right now. Sky will have a better opportunity to get catches. Don't know if he will uh, produce on those catches, but he will have a better opportunity going forward. You think it's going to benefit him the overall? Maybe he goes out there, runs a few less routes, ends up doing more with the place he's actually in there for, but it's got to help him somehow. Can't hurt him much more than it already has. Well, it's it's not bad to have lots of tools to use, but you know sometimes it's just not working out, and sometimes in this offense, Andy Reid just doesn't go to you, or Pat Mahomes doesn't just doesn't go to you. So, I think he's like second in line now for like gadget plays. Nicole Harmon probably takes that spot right now, and and. You know, I feel like Sky Moore had a decent share of those last year. So he's just – and Rasheed Rice has taken some of those plays this year already. So Sky Moore, I don't think it's going to benefit him. I think it's going to hurt his longevity with the Chiefs and just like overall production, which is already bad to begin with. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Um, do we see – maybe MVS start to take less snaps or is he still going to be lining up as our wide receiver? Number one. Oh, wide receiver one all day, baby. He's locked in all year. That's where he's going to stay. I think there's a lot of hype around McColl. Like after the big catch last week, I think it's going to bite into it. Some, I really do. Uh, But again, you know, my thoughts on MVS, he's going to have, more big games, at least one more in the playoffs. I'll, I'll stop saying it. If you, if I say it again. <laughs> I'm not so worried about the production from Rasheed Rice. Uh, I, I think no matter what, as we've seen over the last few weeks, the drops have gone out the window. He has been a much more consistent player. But do we maybe see... I guess a little bit less of Rishi or do you see Andy and Patrick forcing him into the lineup more often running more routes, continuing to get more comfortable uh, in this offense, even with McColl's resurgence. Do you think maybe McColl helps Rishi get open more often and continue to get more and more targets as well? I think Rishi is the only one of the group. It doesn't really hurt. Like, it, it's not going to necessarily bite into his playing time. We see what's been happening. I think it's his involvement and his uh, snap share going up. It's just kind of the natural progression of his development. And I, I don't think McColl being here really threatens that because she has really emerged as the guy in, in the group that's kind of been here or like the, the newish guys. I mean, Rishi is definitely – if if not a true number one, like our best guy going forward, you know. I agree. Uh, on the <laughs> defensive, Those were just my thoughts. <laughs> on the def- <laughs> defensive side, Drew Tranquil is taking over that play calling uh, situation for Nick Bolton, um, and we've got Charles Minahue back now. Frank Clark has signed with the Seattle Seahawks, so we will not expect. To get him, or we're not going to see him as a Kansas City Chief, which I am personally okay with, because FAU Felix and a DK Uzama gets to continue his snap share that he's getting. But with Nick Bolton out, do we expect anything to change now that he'll be out for uh, potentially until the playoffs? No, I really don't think so. I think Drew Tranquil can step right in and play a really, really solid linebacker role for us and play or call, play, call the plays out there for us. And our defense has only gotten better with the mini who now. So 
you take one step forward, but one step back is at the same time. I think the addition of a Menahue to the defense, re- I mean, he was never with us in a regular season game first, so I said, I'm going to say addition. Uh, yeah, the addition of Charles Amenahue to that defensive line really counteracts missing this Nick Bolton when you have the caliber of player in Drew Tranquil. I don't think Drew Tranquil is as good as Nick as Nick Bolton, but he's a great fill-in. He's great to have on the team, and he's not playing. He's playing great, so I'm not going to say he's not playing bad because that's a that's a disservice to him. He's playing great. The defensive line is just cutting it up so bad that the linebackers are easily playing well in the first place. 